I'm Ali. Um, if somebody could tell me to shut up when I hit the five minute mark, that would be good. Um, so yeah, Ali Jarvis, I'm a product director at a company called Certain. We're a tech company in hyper growth kind of phased, all to do with verifying credentials so people can get access to jobs, renting apartments, all that kind of stuff. Um, I work in product and have been in it for about 12 years now. Um, I didn't set out to work in tech. I don't have any technical capabilities. I just ended up here. Um, but I got my taste of it uh, 12 years ago, loved it and have taken conscious decisions to stay in it ever since. Um, I used to work for a background screening company and the way that my career developed and the way I ended up in the world of tech is I ended up staying in a company for quite a long time and moving around different opportunities. So I started out calling companies for references and then learned how to do that and hung around for long enough that I knew where all the bodies were buried. Um, but really it came down to me kind of learning and trying out different jobs and, and building up my knowledge set and then um, moving into training roles so that I was then training other people to do the same thing. Um, and then we had a tech platform. And because I'd been training people, I was a source of knowledge in terms of how people actually used the system. And then it was a bit of poacher turned gamekeeper of if I knew that, then work with the developers and spend time with them and understand how they wanted to build the system and what information they needed to have. And um, then somebody explained to me that that was the concept of product management. And I thought, oh, this is great. Um, and luckily I had an employer at the time who was really good at investing in people and developing them. So they very luckily sent me on a product management course. So I actually had some sort of external knowledge and framework um, to build on. And I kind of took it and ran with it. So. I then ended up working out in Hong Kong for a bit, um, came back here and then decided to go into startup world and um, took the plunge because I knew somebody who'd set up a startup and he needed somebody who'd done what I'd done and we got on pretty well together. So I went in as employee number one and I had no idea what I was doing. None of us did. Um, and day one in the office, I was helping write a proposal for investments at the same time as figuring out how to network the printer um, and buying a kettle because we didn't have one um, and doing all of that fun stuff and just jumping in really and going, what needs to be done? I don't know what to do with it. Let's figure it out together or I'll Google something and somebody will tell me something that they've tried before or I can learn from other people's mistakes. Um, and carried on with it from there really. So I now manage a team of product managers um, and we're working through building a brand new system because we're throwing out the old one, um, which is a really exciting project and a really exciting time. Um, and yeah, I think that's hopefully the sort of thing you were looking for. Good. Right. That was a really good intro. <laughs> Awesome. So hi, everyone. I'm uh, James, and I am a senior customer success partner at a company called Zuvu. Um, kind of like Ali, I had no technical experience when I started. I uh, needed to get an internship to complete my degree at university. And I stumbled across a company called Map Digital, which I then started as a project manager. Uh, I remember my first day, two things very clearly. I uh, started and I think, how the hell am I ever going to learn any of this stuff? Second, I remember the VP coming up to me and said, you will not be a standard intern. You will not make coffees. We will work you very hard. Um, and I actually then thought, OK, that's good. Because that opportunity that I got from there, uh, being able to be open to those experiences really set me on my path on how I could become the best that I could be. And I think without that opportunity at the very start, uh, I wouldn't be where I am today. And so I'm very thankful for that mentor at that time. Uh, and that's kind of been my journey ever since. I've been looking at what opportunity I can get, what mentors I can build, what sponsors, what coaches. And I think that's been absolutely impeccable and has led to my success to rise me up. Um, in the last year, I have been going through a bit of a, let's not say crisis, but almost like, how do I develop myself next? How do I go into that next part of my career? Uh, and what I landed on was starting to come to these events, start meeting people, start learning, start building out that network more and more to ultimately 
find out what I want to do. Um, so there I built a plan uh, and now that's what I'm executing on. So I wanted to bring uh, some of that knowledge today on, I hope maybe some of you are in that same position. You're trying to figure out what your plan is going to be. So uh, we can share some of that experience with you today as well. So very nice to speak to you all. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ian McKenna. I'm the CEO of Wired Sussex. And I, I suppose a bit like Silicon Bryson, where they look after the sort of grassroots community, tech, digital, and creative groups. Wired Sussex looks after the other side of that. So we, we the, the voice of the tech sector, if you like. We will represent the tech sector at local, regional, and national government level for inward investment to the sector within the Brighton, Hove, and Sussex area specifically. Um, in terms of my career, it's, it's a bit surprising so far that of the three panelists so far, none of us are tech. <laughs> so for, for what is essentially a tech, a tech event, and I, I'm no different. I didn't start my career in tech at all. I, I, when I first arrived in the UK, I was uh, the sales and marketing manager for the Aberdeen and Grampian Chamber of Commerce. And if nobody's ever been to Aberdeen, you know, go and have a look, lovely city, take a jacket, it's very cold. Um, and I had a chance meeting, and I mentioned this deliberately because when you think about your next steps in your career, actually sometimes a little bit of luck just plays a part in it, whether we like it or not. And I met a chap called Adam Finley, who was then the managing director of the local radio station. I was talking to him in my capacity as the sales and marketing manager for the Chamber of Commerce. We spoke about all sorts of interesting things. And three days later, he gave me a call and said, did I fancy a career change? Did I fancy moving from sort of corporate governance to, to the media world? Uh, we had a couple of conversations. I joined him a month or so later as the sales manager. And again, at, at that point, kind of, you know, what comes next in your career? I, I remember very clearly having that moment of, I'm the sales manager, but actually I'd quite like to be the sales director. So I, I remember setting that target really quickly on that that would be my next move. So I worked tirelessly for a year, became the sales director. And then of course you go, well, what happens after that? I thought the only next step is managing director. So I worked tirelessly and six months later I became the managing director. And I then spent the next 18 years running various radio stations, the length and breadth of the country, most recently Heart and Capital in Brighton, which is what brought me down here in, in 2011. Um, my move from that into tech was partly, I, I sort of got a bit fed up with the, the corporate sort of pulling together and centralizing of what was local commercial radio. So started to put some feelers out to see what else was out there, to see what else was going on. Somebody I knew, knew of White Sussex, they knew they were looking for uh, a CEO and facilitated some introductions. And that's how, how I ended up there. So in terms of career advancement, have a really clear goal of where it is you wanna go and what it is you wanna achieve. Target people that you're gonna look up to People talk about mentors, and, and in all honesty, slightly controversially, but two-thirds of the mentors I've met in my life shouldn't be mentoring anybody. So you pick your mentor. You decide who your mentor is going to be. Target them, study them, understand them, realize what they do well, and then approach them and ask them whether they'd be prepared to mentor you. That's essentially what I've done in my career, and, and that's where I am where I am now. Thank you. Hello, <laughs> I'm Sandy. Um, I'm a software engineer. Um, well, I did, where should I start? So I didn't mean to be a software engineer. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to be a vet or psychologist or an architect. I, I, that was a big one, but I, I started in Spain. So you have to uh, create a list of priorities and how architecture, uh, didn't get it then, and I was like, well, I love, I like PCs, I've got a PC, I kind of like it, yeah. and I go into tech, <laughs> and it was really hard, um, had no idea what I was meant to learn, coding, I was like, oh my god, I struggle, um, I went through it, um, 
I started, I had this like, oh my God, what am I going to do with this? All this knowledge that I don't know how to link together. It's like databases and coding and all the stuff. And um, so I went to a department in the university to look after a platform, which was an Android um, ticket, like with a QR was a big thing. So we were like, scanning QRs. I barely saw it, but I saw actually the database and the application connected. I was like, oh my God, okay, I got it. Now I can actually get a job for real. Um, Join a group of people uh, that they were starting a startup. Um, so I started with them as a co-founder. It was great. Wasn't getting any money. I think I did it in the hard, the hard way. <laughs> I wasn't getting any money at the start. I was a poor student, like the majority of students. I couldn't do it in the same way, but it's up to you. I had fun as well in the university, but I was poor. Um, I'm still being a student, less poor, but uh, as they say, like you never le um, stop learning and it's great. Um, I loved the uh, startup world. Um, you know, being close to what you're doing, your baby, I still like it. So I moved, you know, well, I didn't choose that one, but it was, it happens to be a, a small company. Um, the, my project was a kind of a um, experiment for the company. They were big in Salesforce. This is one of the funny things, like you get close to some technology at some point, that label jumps into your CV and I still get <laughs> tagged as the Salesforce engineer. I was like, I just did one thing, but anyways, they still call me for that. I should remove that from my CV, really. Um, so that was Java. So my journey was like changing kind of um, languages. I started with Ruby, Java, backend engineer. Um, six years um, ago, I moved to London and I was determined to get into full stack engineering because in my first paid job, um, I was like, oh my God, there's some um, buttons and colors and, you know, working with the designers, it was great. So I was like, I want to do that as well. And my colleague was lovely and they had so much fun with that. And um, in that first job, I really liked it. Um, that my first um, boss, he was lovely. He was pretty much became my mentor. I kind of chose him. Yeah, it was just happened. It was very natural. We spent a lot of time. I think he liked me for some reason. So we were like spending our own time just going through queries. He was big in queries, SQL queries. So I ended up liking them. Um, jump into full stack in London, JavaScript. So left Ruby, Java, now JavaScript, speak in London. So learned that, um, had no idea what I was, I was doing with CSS and HTML after three years later. So I was like, I was just, you know, navigating um, as good as I could. Um, then I had an amazing colleague. He was a bit very passionate about Kubernetes. He was like, this is going to be the big thing Sunday. I was like, okay, okay, I'm going to learn it. So I was like, all about learning and, you know, getting knowledge uh, very widely just not coding and also because I was in startup so I was like I need to be able to do, the, do all this stuff at the same time I really enjoy it um, I created my own project I definitely recommend to have always a project so you can prove things test out things and keep learning and just put there and then you just go into your company and just add them there um, Kubernetes became a big thing in my CV now companies were like oh you know it's Kubernetes that has a big learning curve. I was like, yep, I know. <laughs> it was hard. <laughs> I cry a couple of times because I didn't understand it. Um, so then, yeah, my other job, what I did, I realized at some point, talking about having clear what you want to do, is because I really liked the startup life. But something I realized is like, okay, I know the basics, I know how to put things together, but it's like, what's going to happen next with this project? Once you prove the, the product, like um, how we're going to scale this. So I decided to go in to a slightly bigger um, project. My, my next company was like something that was already proven. So we needed to do it like with high standards. And that was my, my way of getting into a new thing. I had to ask the companies uh, this, uh, what was the the state of the company and the point of the product and stuff. So I jumped in a company. They were big in Canada and they were like expanding in Europe. So 
they knew that the product was working and we just needed to build it here in high class. So it was like, great. And they were like, but you don't know React, but we are willing you to not only React. So it's like, cool. I was actually looking for a Vue.js developer, but React is fine. <laughs> People look happy with it. So I became a React uh, developer. And then also we did a lot of Kubernetes, AWS, um, anything. So it was like, Quite, I like to call myself a real full stack, but a lot of people would say no. Um, then, um, sadly, they stopped actually expansion. So I had to change another job. And I was like, well, now I want something that actually is scaling, because that was the thing, right? Like high standard um, development. But now I want just to see what happens afterwards, what happens when a unicorn actually goes global and stuff. Um, now I'm currently working in Primer a bit, it's um, a scale up, <laughs> but apparently I didn't know that was a word, but they were like, oh, we're in a scale up. So like, great, this is why I said what I was looking for. Um, now I'm struggling because we are 200 people and <laughs> I've just never been so around so many engineers. My team's given like five, seven max. And now we're like 50, a lot of um, bureaucracy and it's a thing, I'm learning, I'm loving it. I, I was looking for it. <laughs> so now I'm like, have to deal with it. But I really enjoy it, definitely. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't know if that was um, was meant to tell you that, but <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you guys. Um, I really want to ask you loads of questions, but we're doing it differently. Um, so yeah, really interesting for different sort of routes in. What struck me was um, all of you were saying there's an element of uncertainty. You didn't actually intend or you didn't know exactly where you're going to end up, but you you went for it. And then there's a wiggly line of your career that kind of like you went here, there, and never were. Um, Ian disposed of his entire senior team within six months of joining his, his company, which is quite impressive. Um, uh, and yeah, just a commitment to to sort of furthering yourself as well is what I heard and, and having a, a, a mentor, uh, finding yourself a mentor as well seems to come through from, from everyone and, and sort of rolling with it and, um, and taking the opportunities. That's what, that's, that's what struck me. Um, thank you, really, really, really interesting. Um, now you guys are gonna have a chance to um, spend a bit of time with these guys. So uh, the idea is to do the SWOT analysis. So that's kind of the activity, but feel free, you know, it's 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 an informal thing. So um, take the opportunity to chat and ask questions um, and just make those connections and, and see where it goes as well. So um, if everyone could just choose, we've got four tables. Um, actually, uh, one thing I wanted to say was we are being filmed tonight. Uh, there's a live stream that camera that Alex has got. Um, so that table there, the big table um, in front of Alex is, is going to be the audio visual table that everyone online is going to hear. So if you don't want to be broadcast um, or part of that, then don't sit on that table. Um, <laughs> so yeah, 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 get your good side to the camera. Um, uh, but uh, our, our guests are going to rotate every eight minutes i think i'll do a buzzer or something i'll say time um so you'll get a chance to speak to all of them so at the end um do try and fill out your strengths and weaknesses and opportunities and threats we'll get some feedback at the end uh and then we'll send it out through the group uh so right if you want to take one of the four there's there's one down there uh, uh, I was just giving a quick introduction there into myself. So uh, I'm James, I'm the customer success partner on the panel today. Um, so we're going to be talking a little bit uh, on this table today around the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. Um, I'll probably get everyone on the table here to probably put your hand up and are you in the industry at the moment? Are you looking to come into the industry? What's the general split? Sorry, I joined the tech industry in May. Yep. I joined the tech industry in May. I was in FMCG, which I realise not everyone knows. It's B to C, so like anything you find in the supermarket for about six years of my career, uh, working in pet food, coffee. Anyway, and I just wanted a change, so I stayed within marketing, but I've moved to tech. And I absolutely love it. Like I've got a new energy. Yeah, it's just amazing. So I'm here just to 
understand it more, get closer to it, be involved in a community. Yeah. One of my strengths. Um, so I've been I've been told it's the energy and enthusiasm that I bring to the team. Um, I think that's a pretty pretty good strength. But yeah. So I think. I'll, I'll give a quick uh, strength on my side as well, what I've found. And I, I love what uh, Charlotte has done with energy and enthusiasm. That's very much how I've tried to do my career. I think one of my strengths is very much looking at how I can get myself better by 1% every day. So whether that's starting an hour early uh, and reading, I have got into the habit of reading every day and just trying different books, material to get different inspiration and ideas. So, you know, that, that's been one of my strengths is trying to better myself 1% because if you can do that, not many people, you know, are, are willing to do that. So you definitely set yourself apart when you're uh, at that stage at the moment. Um, oh. <clears throat> um, should I introduce myself first? <clears throat> okay, my name is quite long though. So... <laughs> I'll just say my name is Emeka, or you can call me Chuck. So I would say I'm very new to tech, so I don't know if I'm in or I'm just at the starting line, but I know that I'm just, I'm in the beginning overall. And what really has been pushing me um, basically is my curiosity, one, because I'm a very curious person. Two, I love to network. I'm always interested in how people especially in, in the tech industry, um, are active in their daily lives as, and also professionally as well. And then I won't say I'm ambitious, but I'll say I am. I'm a bit lazy, but I'm ambitious. So, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know. So, yes, always outsource it. Outsourcing. That's the best thing. So I think these are mine. Um, I'll just hand it over to the next person. So I'm not working in tech at the moment, but I'm looking to get into tech. Um, I'm still learning, so learning how to code. And um, I would say that's also one of my strengths. I tend to learn quite easily and um, continuously. So. <laughs> Uh, I'm Pete. I, I've been a professional web developer for about 18 years, so I've been doing this quite a long time. And also I've been teaching it for about the last 12 or 13 years as well. Um, so yeah, I've, I've sort of come along as, a, as an observer as opposed to someone who's what, looking to get into tech. What would be your advice? What would be your strength? And what would be your advice? Uh, I, I love all the stuff that you've just been saying. So always learning. I, I mean, I don't know if this scares you or not, but I've been doing this professionally for years and I, I'm always learning every day. So you might think that, um, that you know, you'll get to a point in your career where, oh, I'm in tech. I know what I'm doing. I've got this job. I've been doing it for years. I still use a search engine 50 times a day and I'm still, you know, looking up new stuff and not knowing how to do stuff. So that's, that's great. So actually all the things that you mentioned there about being ambitious and being curious and just pushing yourself every day is, and, and the enthusiasm and all of it is perfect. It's exactly what you need. You know, you never, you never sit still. I just thought of another one. Your way to, yeah. I think uh, a good one that you kind of are going to there is taking risks. I think everybody that has come to this event today in some way, shape or form is taking that risk to meet new people, uh, build that relationship, or maybe it's you need to speak to your manager. You know, you need to tell them what your goals are, what your aspirations are. And taking that risk is, you know, the first step. But even learning, being curious is almost a risk. I think that's a... Pushing yourself beyond your comfort zone is good. Yeah, yeah. comfort zone is a really good one as well. Charlotte, did you have uh, any more? I think in strengths, do we have any more? Okay, I'll give a quick uh, summary of all the ones that we have so far for everyone. So under strengths, we have got energy and enthusiasm. 1% better every day, 
curiosity, networking, ambitious, always learning with a little uh, speech bubble saying every day, take risks. Oh, I missed actually always is underlined as well. Uh, and then push yourself beyond your comfort zone. We have another one. I don't know, maybe believing in your guts. I don't know your guts feeling because you could have doubts. Yeah, trust the God because you, have, you could have doubts that this could be the wrong path. But if your gut is still telling you, just give it a, like a little try, you never know. I think you should believe in your gut, like trust in it. Because that's what happened to me. <laughs> yeah. Everything's on fire. I was just saying, um, what we just said there is like, trust your gut. And I said, especially in the startup world, it can sometimes feel everything's on fire, but you've got to believe in your team and keep and trust your gut. You know, if you if this feels right, just stick with it. And I'd say 99 times <laughs> it will work out. And even if it doesn't, even if it's just 10%, so just it's best. So I'm of the opinion. Before you have anything to say, make sure you've tried it out or at least you've read about it. So just even if you have like 5%, your gut is telling you, just look into it. You never know. I wonder if that's opportunities you said. Yeah, so we're also now going to take a little look into opportunities, weaknesses, because strengths do play a big part in that as well so what were you going to say charlotte um so you said something about uh, you you're a big believer in not saying or anything until you've tried it out yourself now i think that's maybe something in opportunities because you know it kind of leads on from a strength of taking risks but actually maybe seeing opportunities and just trying it or giving it a go you know it's maybe putting opportunities in a different light but I feel there's something in that. I don't know. I think that's perfect. I think the opportunities is the biggest thing, which I'm sure everyone here is, you know, trying to get to. Um, I think in my intro, I mentioned that I started this year really not knowing what I wanted to do. But I came to a lot of these events and, uh, you know, I started meeting new people. And then that naturally just creates opportunity, which you then need to be able to jump on and execute on. Uh, and I think everyone on the panel today mentioned that as well. So, yeah, I think that's a, a really good one to, to mention. Um, weaknesses is an interesting one. Uh, I think everyone has, you know, some sort of imposter syndrome at some point in their career or probably every day. I know I definitely do when I'm going into meetings and but although it's a strength, uh, although it's a weakness and it can also be a strength as well because it keeps you on the ball. You know, you know, you need to be able to do some research to make sure that you're confident in that space and just get the experience. So maybe Charlotte, if we are you able to put. Sorry, what should I write here? Just try so it's basically before you have an opinion like research on it or read about it or try it out do we have any more weaknesses opportunity though so um adding to opportunities i would yeah there's an e um, um, well, who cares? <laughs> so for opportunities, I would add, um, if you meet or you come across someone who, who is working in an area you're interested in, don't be afraid to have a conversation with the person. Just even if like the worst thing that can happen is the person is going to ignore you, but just try to have a conversation because you never know and make sure you present yourself and maybe what you're interested in because maybe you could get an opportunity there or a friendship or professional relationship there so don't miss out on that as well 
yeah, pe people love sharing knowledge. So that's a really good idea. If you meet someone who works in the area you want to work in, go just go and chat to them. People, people love sharing knowledge. Um, I don't know if anyone has a pick in their class. I, I, I can give you uh, one of my personal weaknesses that turned into an opportunity if that's of interest. So I'm not I'm not the most confident of people. And I can remember, although back in the mist of time when I was straight out of uni and looking for a job in this stuff, um, and my first job. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah, you can carry on. Yeah, my, so my. My first job in tech, which which may be useful, yes. But my first job in tech came from uh, a friend of mine who had done the same university course, had a meeting with another company, and looked on their website and said they've got a job going. Get in touch with them. And I never would have been um, motivated enough to to go out there just because I was I was you know I wasn't really outgoing. I was quite nervous about these things. And so it's only my friend pushing me to say they've got a job. You can do what what they do just email them and and i did and it worked and that's how i started with my first job basically it was just that little push um is it, are you talking about imposter syndrome is that, is that with this company it, it's not really but it's related yeah yeah oh, okay okay yeah yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's why I wrote Leaning on Friends. It's okay because I'm one of I can I can be um one of those people who is like I can do it all on my own and if I can't do it on my own then that's means I'm rubbish. But what I think I've learned and as I've got better in my career is to ask for help and to just ask questions. I think like always asking questions, it doesn't matter like I have just started in tech um, in marketing. Well, I'm marketing in tech, but I've always worked in marketing. Um, so I work for um, yeah, software company in Brighton. But I started out in uh, B2C, so selling like goods in supermarkets, <laughs> anything from coffee to pet food. Um, but yeah, I'd say leaning on friends and asking questions. Yeah. Okay. Actually, I agree with that because um, I'm the perfect example of someone who, you know, just got into like gained interest in tech because I just I'm almost done with my masters in information technology, and that decision for the masters was on a whim because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I did engineering, didn't really like it, but later on, you know, I love fashion art, but at the same time, I love creating designs that involve um, technology. Like right now, I have an idea on a smart prescription glasses, which is a mixture of fashion and technology. Um, but then I was leaning so much on, um, I was thinking I could do it alone, that I hope I'm getting right. But at some point I got, yeah, I found it difficult and I got lost in the process. So I was feeling a bit like ashamed if I could ask friends, like Willie, would they answer? Or would they be like, oh, you can do it. Why are you asking? Or the one that I hate the most is Google is a friend. Like I hate that term, no matter how independent you are in studying, like Google, if Google won't give you all the answers because Google can present something if you don't understand the terms and terminologies of that area, you're still going to be lost. So you still need a friend or someone who is good in that area to explain at least or to help you out. So it's come up time and time again, but entirely related to that again is the idea of mentors. And so just to have a steer in the right direction, how, however you find them and whoever it might be. Do you mean mentors or physical mentors? Whatever. Yeah. I, I would always recommend that you go for a mentor, somebody that you can sit down and talk to face to face or, or on a, a Google or a Zoom call so that you have that actual interaction time. Can, can I just come back to your point earlier where you were talking about leaning on friends and, and being okay with that. And you, I think you said something like you, you've always been the sort of person that felt you could do it on your own and yeah. wanted to do it on your own. 
let me 100%, 1,000% guarantee you, you can't. Yeah. You cannot do it on your own, nor should you try, ever. Yeah. Yeah. You should absolutely lean on people, talk to your peers, talk to your colleagues, take advice, but then be really cautious about the advice you take and where you take it from. Don't take advice from everybody. It's a little, I said a bit earlier on controversially that, you know, two thirds of the people I know out there who profess to be mentors really shouldn't be mentoring anybody. So, so choose your mentor. And, and by choose your mentor, I mean, study them. You know, who, who are they? What do they do? Oh, there's Steve over there. Study Steve. If he's going to be your mentor, study him, see what he's done. Look at the work he's done. And way up, sorry, I used an example because you're purely there, Steve. And then, <laughs> but, but, and then work out whether, you know, has this person achieved the things in their career that I aspire to achieve in mine? And can I learn something in that journey? And then go and ask, and go and ask for that help. I, I've yet to come across somebody in business who isn't prepared to give you time to sit down with you and work through what those challenges are and where you want to go. Yeah, I, I think exactly that. I think added to that, not listening, definitely listen to people, but always remember that's their subjective opinion. Ultimately, it's going to be your decision. Yeah, so so it's really good to gather the opinions from a few people and then take of it the useful bits. Because because sometimes when people tell you about what worked for them, it's almost like saying, "Oh, I won the lottery. Here's the lottery numbers that I used." Because yeah, yeah, yeah. if you're doing it 20 years after they're doing it, it it won't necessarily work the same way. But it's good to just meet people and absolutely, yeah, absolutely. yeah. So what, have you, what have you got under threats? I just said, don't listen. Um, so under threats off the back of that conversation, I said, don't listen to everything. Because I think you're so right. So, you know, I've been on a big journey where I'm super excited about my career again. And I feel like, oh, my God, I, I, I am really good at what I do. Whereas I was, I was in this place where I felt crap, basically. And so I have reached out to people for advice and mentors and, you know, have a great network now, which is great, which was maybe always there, but I never lent on it. Um, and I, you know, was speaking to someone who's very senior at a fashion company and they were they're very like opinionated and all of this. And then speaking to someone else and their opinions are so different. You have to navigate your way through. And also, I think you always have to put your own spin on it because you're in your own position, in your own place in time, in your own company. And you know what will work. And also it's it's trial and error. But I really liked that. So don't listen to everything. The other thing I would say is as, as a key part of career development is your own personal learning and reading. I, I, and I'm not, I'm not the sort of person that, that has a book on the go all the time, but I will actively try to read at least sort of three a year. And they can, they can range in any subject. And, and I think people fall into the trap of going, I'm, I'm a data engineer, therefore I will read information about data engineering where you sp spread it much wider than that. If, you, if you're if you an engineer, but you, you have an interest in marketing, read some stuff about it, find out about it so that you have that base knowledge of yourself to inform your own decisions on. But at any given time, have something, a podcast, a book, something you're dipping into that's informing, educating, and, and steering you. Um, to add to that, although, well, add, with the podcast, I would recommend one of them is um, the diary of a CEO. I don't know. I'm obsessed with it. I mean, I'm obsessed with it. But um, there's one I also listen to called the Daily Boost. So it's like ten minutes every morning. It's almost like a topic, maybe why are you challenging yourself. And for ten minutes, he will talk about it. So it's like as you're going to work very quickly to help you with your morning. Um, another thing, under threats, I don't know, is don't spend all your time just listening to people, but act on it. Because most times you, we thought, like I, I, I did, I fell into this rabbit hole of trying to gain as much information as possible, but not acting on it. At some point, it became overwhelming. I just almost felt demotivated to even do anything. So whatever you, leave, you hear, is best you act. Then if it fails, you try the next step. But don't just listen and listen and listen and then do nothing. So, I, 
someone um, actually, someone from one of these events actually said, done is better than perfect. And for me personally, that really resonated because I always want to put my best foot forward. If I'm giving you something, I want to make sure it's the polished final thing. And I literally use it even when I'm putting a picture up. I'm like, okay, it's done. It's better than perfect. I might go back with the leveler about 10 times, but it's done. It's up, you know, and that really resonated. And I think that links back to like, don't forget to take action. So what are you finding out of the perfect? It just wasn't getting done. Yeah, or it, it's not not getting done, but then I, I just could get overwhelmed because it's like I need to do all of these things to 100% of my ability when actually I just need to get stuck in and do as much as I can and present back what I've done. So I, I yeah, I found it really useful. Hmm. Do you want to say anything? I'm good. Okay, just one more. Remember to take breaks. <laughs> I mean, don't be upset with yourself if it doesn't go right. Just take a break and um, come back to it later. All right, thank you so much. Um, I, I've got a question for you folks, and you don't have to answer it, but just have you thought about, you know, where you're going on the journey and where you want to get to in, in six months or a year or two years or three years? Well, all of you, you don't have to answer it specifically, like in three years I want to be doing this, but have you thought along those lines of, of where it's going? Can we actually think along those lines or does it change so quickly that it might be a, th a three year yeah. plan yeah. will fail because everything has shifted. So at the moment, I'm wondering actually how much AI is going to change things and what we're going to do on the coding part, how much we need to know and how much will be done automatically and we then patch it together. Yeah. Is that something we should put in the threats column? Because I think there's a lot of people feeling a bit nervous about AI and what that means and what will that mean for me and and or it's a great opportunity, but I don't know anything about it. It's exploded super fast. I haven't had time to get myself the skills. I think it's both. And I think often I've always found that you'll get things that appear in multiple places yeah. and it's it might be a great opportunity but it could also be a threat because you don't have a, a kind of straight line into it yet so but i think that's where you can look to see what can you do to convert an opportunity a threat into an opportunity what do you need to do who do you need to talk to to be able to make it so that it you can take advantage of the opportunity this is a great list. You guys have been really busy. Well, I agree with that because I feel every like current business was gotten from the idea of something being a threat because, you know, even the internet as an example, you know, communication wasn't as easy as it is now before the invention of the internet. And now you have like the mobile phone because before then, the telephone, before then, it was PC, I think, was it? Or did it PC come before telephone? Or did the telephone come before PC? Okay, sorry. I suck at history, so sorry. Uh, so, <laughs> so, but yes, um, so that, I think, that, I think what we will say is, if you want to have a good business idea, think of a threat and maybe see if you can find a solution to that threat. So that would maybe help, like, like an example, which I'm putting out there. So my example is the issues with people, uh, those who are wearing prescription, uh, prescription glasses because of the constant changing of lenses depending on your eye problems. So I came up with a business, I came up with a business idea on smart prescription glasses I already have the concept, but I think I'll just put it there. <laughs> but yeah. Um. We, we mentioned earlier about making, I mean, not necessarily long-term plans, but thinking about where we want to go, but, but how much you can do because of the uncertainty in the market. But I think just even if you don't necessarily follow through them, it's nice to have that because you have a goal that you 
lean towards. You never know where it will take you. But if you if you're generally working towards something, it, it at least suggests progress. I'd say, um, so I think from me and I one, I guess I'm putting to you guys as experts. How do you take action on your plan? So you know, like I have a plan. I'd like to be head of marketing eventually, but you know, I'm currently basically marketing manager slash head of marketing, but I know that, you know, I've not been in the company long, et cetera, et cetera. I feel, you know, the interim step is marketing manager and then let's work on my development plan to get me to head of marketing. How, how do you go about executing that? Cause I'm trying to be open. I'm trying to, you know, put my best foot forward, but I, I do still struggle. Like I don't really know how to do that in the best way without just going, I want this. So yeah, I'm putting it to you. Uh, so I think there's a few things. So you've got down here mentors. I think that's a really, really good thing that you can have somebody that you can talk to, whether that is your direct line manager or whether that's somebody else, but to help you with that gap analysis of here's where I am now, here's where I want to be, what's the gap between like why I couldn't just walk into it right now? Is it skills? Is it knowledge? Is it exposure? Is it, you know, that it's a waiting game in this particular company that I'm in? There's all sorts of different things. So I think it's really hard to make that plan until you're able to see what the building blocks of that plan are. So I think that's one. I think then you've got down here like knowledge sharing and try something before you form an opinion. No, no, sorry. Um, so I think it's not always a straight line. Mm. So the knowledge sharing is helpful to find out how other people got there, mm. like examples of people who are where you where you want to be and what routes did they take, what did they find helpful. So it's mentoring and it's the networking. I think the other side of it with the networking and the people, which is really important and you heard from the panel earlier, is it's not always about having an official mentor as well. So I've got great people that I've worked with for a long time. We've got great respect for each other at work. And I know that when I, I'm not in the room, that they would advocate on my behalf or they would point an opportunity in my direction. And they've absolutely, I know categorically they've done that as well. So they're really helpful for advice, but it also means that I've got a champion if I need it and I'm not in the room. So that network is really, really helpful. Um, those are the things off the top of my head. Does anyone else? Yeah. I really like that. Um, so someone I have got as a mentor said, you've got to build your camp. So you have to have people that you can rely on outside of your like immediate like group at work. So outside of everyone that you're working with, you know, they know what you're doing day to day. So expand your camp. Other people in the business need to know what you're doing. So make sure they do like go and tell them. So I, I like that. I like it when I hear the same thing come back to me because it means that, you know, it's a good thing. Should probably. I've never had an official mentor. And I went to a networking event recently with a bunch of women working in the legal profession in London, all very, very successful. None of them had had an official mentor. So I think it absolutely is useful, but it's not, it doesn't always need to look officially like you've proposed mentoring to somebody um, it can come in many different shapes and forms and I think recognizing that and putting time and effort into those relationships is important um, to, to help like you say form that build that camp I think it's a really really sensible piece of advice that you've had <laughs> we've run out of space <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Do I have any? Do I have anything to add? Uh, so, but I, I don't know. Well, I don't know how to put this. So, uh, let's say I gained interest a bit in tech more during the lockdown, and I pr try the um, practicing um, coding. But then, you know, as everyone is saying, find a mentor, find this, a mentor, mentor. But I've not really had, like, met people in tech until, I would say, last year. And even last year, I didn't even really get the opportunity to interact with people that much until this year. And keep in mind, I just kind of finished my master's in IT. So 
do you think the mental thing is a how do I put it? I, I, this seems strong, but like, is it like a do or die thing, or you know? So for me, when I was like, oh, I need mentor. The word mentor, I think, sounds really scary. I actually just looked at my friends and family. So my mentor is actually just someone in my family, and so. I've had to make a fine line between we're not just going to dinner. We're actually I'm putting this as a Zoom meeting because else you're just going to chat to me about family. But yeah, I just and it's so silly. I was like, why have I never had my eyes open to this? Like, why did I never think I'll put in time with some of my family who are really knowledgeable in this area and just learn from them? So it, it it's just I just chat about like what's going on. It's literally like update me on where you are since we last spoke. And we just talk about what's going on at work. And just having a dedicated time to talk to other people who are knowledgeable about what you're doing or even from another industry. I think the word mentor, you know, it's an easy way to bucket it, but I think it's, yeah, just someone you admire or respect. The other thing I would say is organizations like this, another great example is Code Bar, yes. where it's really practical, direct Code Bar. So it's, it's run a bit like this in that it will be in different locations in different offices. Yep, Brighton. And, but if you, if so the purpose of it is that you're doing practical coding. That's really what it's focused on. But you can take your project, you can then sit down and get time with somebody who is an experienced engineer and they're, they're specifically knowledgeable in the area that you want to work in. And then they'll work, look at the project together with you and give you practical advice and tips and guidance and everything else. And it's done after hours. There's pizza, there's drinks. It's a really kind of relaxed, friendly environment. And it's a great way if you don't have an official training program or a course or, you know, it's not being done through your employer to get access to that kind of specialist knowledge. It's really cool. I'm really sorry. I, I can follow up on that because I've, yeah. Thanks, Ellen. Thanks. Nice to meet you guys. Yeah, so I can't I can't help on the marketing side, unfortunately. But for the, you're both sounds like you're both interested in the coding side. Yes. Yeah. So code code bar is a really good one, and there's other there's other um, there's other developer groups. Um, so Steve mentioned earlier, there's there's loads of developer groups in Brighton for specific different technologies if you're after assistance or mentorship with specific technologies. So it depends It depends on, again, coming back to this idea of your goals, of, of what it is you're after. If, if, you're, if your aim is to get into, uh, into a tech role and you have a certain level of tech knowledge but you want to get to a higher level of tech knowledge, then there are people that you can speak to who can help you to, um, to progress to that next level. Um, yeah. Uh, you, you, yeah, you have. This is awesome. All, all of the panelists in pretty much all of our sessions have said, um, "I've, I, I've still got imposter syndrome, and uh, you know, I ran my own business for 20 years, and so do I. So, I think it doesn't, it doesn't go away, to be honest with you. Yeah, you know, and there's an element of that feeling like you're winging it, and that's okay. You have to live with that. Uh, it, it's a, it can be seen as, as positive because." Um, I mean, I'd rather be the stupidest room in uh, the stupidest person uh, in a room full of clever people because there's people I can learn from. Yeah. So the flip side of imposter syndrome, and I, it's got a name, and I can't remember what it is, but it's that you never question yourself and you never question your knowledge and your and you never doubt. And actually, that is a weakness. That's dangerous because you don't realise that there's things that you don't know and things that you can always learn. So although it's it can be difficult, imposter syndrome has its positives because it does keep you grounded and keep you you know you try and try and reflect on it and not be um irrational about it and and if it helps you identify something that you could improve fantastic just as long as it isn't a crippling doubt yeah i, I think there's that element of like good leadership where you're always learning uh, and you're always open to learning and um 
you know, maybe that, that like you said, that, that staying grounded with not thinking you're the best in the room and knowing that you're not is actually a good way to show leadership and empower others and, and, and all those good things that can happen in a team. So, yeah, yeah, I think you might have a point. Yeah, but I think the bad side is you'll never get to appreciate what you've done so far because that's another thing because you keep questioning if you've done enough and you know with that continuous doubt and questioning <laughs> I know <laughs> on the on the flip side of imposter syndrome I heard something recently called B Delulu and Delulu is where you're a bit delusional. So it's almost like you said about winging it. You just, if you're not confident, just pretend you're a bit confident or like, you know, be a bit delusional that you are the best person in the room or like, it's not being cocky. It's not this. It's just like giving yourself this moment to be Delulu. Yeah, exactly. You're not going around going, I'm Delulu tonight, but it helps that get over that imposter syndrome, like fake it till you make it element, but. And always, always remember that everyone is likely feeling the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> that is the absolute key. I, it's kind of unfair in that same because when you do express yourself, it's kind of annoying when the person you're talking to is like, oh, I've never experienced that. And it just makes you feel, <laughs> it, what, what it happens? <laughs> like, and they... <laughs> Uh, I know. So, but I've always accepted that if someone says they've not experienced it, I go to the next person because I have a feeling I'm just going to be wasting my time trying to co connect with the person. Um, but don't be afraid to be. Don't be too tough. Well, I feel like you could, but don't be too tough on yourself. Because, I mean, sometimes you need to be tough on yourself, especially in... Because that could be also another way to motivate yourself. As an example, maybe you're feeling a bit too demotivated to get up to do work. But then you be you realize that the reality is if you don't get up, you're not going to. Yeah. And you could get fired. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the difference between um, being motivated and not being tough. But with, for me, being tough comes back to, so I had a good analogy. I love analogies. But I had an analogy of if a wood cut, if, there were two woodcutters and one woodcutter didn't stop to cut to sharpen his blade he would cut just as many trees as the guy who didn't stop to, to sharpen his blade because the guy who didn't stop to sharpen his blade would have a blunt saw so it's like it's the same for yourself you need to recharge sometimes and you need to take that time to make sure that you're being your best self and it's like we we put weekends in called like R and R weekends, like rest and recovery weekends, because you sometimes just need time. So for me, that's what don't be too tough on yourself means. It means you don't always have to be, you know, twenty four hours a day, three six five. You need to have some time. For me, person. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was going to also say it helps to know yourself, and maybe that comes more with age. But um, I I know this thing about you said it there about the r and r i'm not the most, you can tell immediately i'm not the most outgoing person i'm not that comfortable in big crowds talking to big groups or whatever it might be so I, actually i know for myself and it's come from years of learning that i need that downtime and i need to get away from people and that's how i recharge other people who are more outgoing actually maybe they get their energy from other people and they need to do more of that stuff to but but it's just get to know yourself and know what works for you and and that's where no, I think that was really, really good. And I think get to know yourself is a really good one for the weakness because yeah. my biggest weakness is burying my head in the sand sometimes. Yeah. Uh, you know, if there's a problem and it's really hard to overcome, it's, you know, sometimes you might not spend the time on it. So just make sure that when you do come up to those problems, don't be scared. Just sit in it, take the time. And that's my biggest weakness that I'm working on at the minute is to, to not shy away but spend the time thinking. If you don't get the answer right in that five minutes you're thinking about it, take another five, take another 10, come back to it. And it's not being scared of not having that answer for a really tough problem, but just working through it and breaking it down bit by bit. And that's what today's about really, isn't it? It's, it is what is that next step of your career? It isn't just easy on how you do that. It's breaking it down, don't shy away and just face it and do everything you need to do to get there. 
I, I have a quick question. So for the three of you who've come along for the evening, I mean, is this what you're expecting and hoping to get out of it? And do you find this motivating and useful to like, yes, I'm going to seize the moment? Or I guess, how do you feel about all this? And is it what you wanted yeah, to hear? And um, So I'll be honest, when I heard it was a SWAT, I was like, oh, here we go. You know, the amount of times I've done a SWAT in my career, but actually... I do feel energized after these conversations and I'm actually so pleased you sat on our table because I feel like I've got loads of insights from you and like, you know, both of you, I just feel like your inputs have given me energy and I've, I've actually found this great. I think you can just tell from my annotations how like energized I am. Um, so yeah, I found this a really good setup because I've done the panels as well and they're also useful, but this is like getting down yeah. with everyone and just honesty. Well, um, so there's this thing I always do, which is have no expectations before starting. Um, so anything I get out of it, I, you know, I always enjoy it. So it's, I will always say it's exactly what I wanted it to be because all, what I'm always targeting is to meet people, know how people do things, um, see the different aspects of the industry as well because you know you never know the areas like i never knew there was anything called uh, a prompt engineer or is it prompt i mean that the first time that was last week i mean i never knew that was a thing but someone is making hundreds of thousands of dollars from that <laughs> so you you know i'm always open to new knowledge and Every like whatever I get, I always enjoy it. And for sure, everything here, I feel like this is me. This is me today. And uh, me, 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 me is like, but I, I like I'm really grateful for everything. So and I'm glad I've decided to volunteer. So yes, Silicon Brighton. <laughs> um so I would say it it doesn't really change anything for me in regards to motivation because my motivation is always high. So that doesn't change. But I usually learn by myself. Um, so it's just me, my laptop, the courses I do, chat GPT. And it's good to get um, some information from actual people and people that are in those roles that I want to get into already. So that's really helpful to get another perspective. We're running slightly late, so I think we're going to not do the combined board, um, if that's all right. But what we're going to do is just um, these guys are all going to feedback from the last table that they're on, uh, just the key themes that were emerging, just so that everyone can hear what everyone else was saying. And there was a lot of similarities between the tables and some super, super interesting conversations going on. Um, so, yeah, if um, Ali, if you could just feedback the key themes from, from your table. So some things. Sorry. So what I think was a common theme across all the tables that I was on was that some things appear in more than one of these quadrants. So we've got, for example, AI as a threat and an opportunity, um, depending on which way you look at it and and what you might know about it already or your the skills that you've got. I think networking came up a lot as a strength of building your network at events like this, but also in your working community, in your personal network and having mentors and advocates and people in your corner fighting for you or giving you advice and knowledge sharing. Um, and what else have we got? Uh, ambition and confidence, I think, also came up as a strength. Um, so that was another significant one of, uh, I think there's a couple here who've been in Brighton a week and they're here, which I think is amazing. I said it took me about 10 years to come to something like this. Um, so that confidence, I think, is a really, really critical strength. I think one of the key ones that I saw was under weaknesses and that was imposter syndrome but i think everyone experiences that in one way shape or another and one thing that we all spoke about was that just remember that probably everyone is so just feel confident in what you know and um, never stop learning i think that was a key theme for everyone uh, every day trust your gut build and expand your camp so coming to events like this speaking to your peers at your uh, work 
another good one was uh, AI, ChatGPT, and also Web3. So how is that an opportunity? How is that a threat? How is that potentially a weakness as well if it's stopping you problem solving or thinking for yourself? Or is it also a strength because you you know, know how to input it as well? Um, another good one is take risks. I think that's a big, big one. And, you know, everyone that's come to this event today in some way, shape or form has taken a risk to get out of your comfort zone, meet new people and experience new things. I agree with everything the, my two colleagues have said in terms of uh, imposter syndrome came across on, on just about every table that I, I was in. And it, it, it's amazing, really, that, you know, so many highly talented, skilled people suffer from the, this concept of either I'm conning my way into this position or I'm not good enough. It's I, it's, a, it's a nonsense, guys. I, I'm not suggesting the condition of imposter syndrome is a nonsense, but for you to feel that way is a nonsense. You just should not feel that way. You're in the position because somebody saw something in you that was good enough to offer you the job. Get in there and own the damn thing. And the other one that I, I want to touch on is um, personal brand. I spoke about that at some of the tables I was at. And, and you'll see it, you'll see it every day in a CV that you receive or a LinkedIn profile that you look for, you look at, particularly if you're recruiting at that time. If the individual hasn't taken the time to focus on the CV they've put together or focus on their personal brand, which is their digital brand is their LinkedIn profile, it jumps out something horrible and you don't get past that first step. So my advice would be park the imposter syndrome. You don't need that in your life at all, but really focus on your personal brand. Thank you. What can I say that hasn't been said already? <laughs> yeah, it's, just, it's amazing. I think in the few times I've done similar exercises, it's always the same, definitely imposter syndrome. Um, but at some point, we all learn that we all have it. So you're like, okay, fine. <laughs> so it's okay um and you just jump and do it um in tech one thing that i was saying um you have you've given time to learn that's a big thing you know you have the time the resources use them your colleagues are there for to help you um other things that i was asked like what's the biggest opportunity the uk is so full of jobs <laughs> so many jobs every single company is hiring so yeah, don't fear that like, it's a good um, choice. It's a good career, good industry. I really like it. Um, what you go there? Mentors, mentors. I definitely think, yeah, talk to people. Um, I like talking, so yeah. uh, <laughs> message me on LinkedIn. I'm more than happy to share any anything. I'm actually a mentor in Women Who Code um, Network. So any information, I'm always going to be um, available. I like to help uh, and I'm big into helping and supporting women. So please reach out. Well, if we got there, yeah, I don't know what else to say. AI, I love AI. I think it's a tool. It's a tool, not a threat. I'm using it a lot in the last year. Um, one of my weaknesses is communication and writing and stuff. Doesn't matter language. Um, <laughs> and it's just all solving my problems. So I love it. <laughs> Southern was like, woo, so I'm better at communication now. <laughs> Shouldn't put it as my weaknesses anymore. So yeah, I don't know. Thank you, guys. Um, we're, we're out of time. We need a little bit of time at the end just to network. And uh, if you didn't get the chance to speak to one of these guys, I know Sandy didn't make it to a table, sorry, didn't quite uh, figure out. So uh, make sure you grab these guys before the end if you haven't spoken to them. Um, uh, I was going to put a QR code up for Tech Native, but the uh, QR code is broken for some reason. So come and see me um, or log on to technativedigital.com. Um, and on there, there's... Uh, a bit about become a tech native and there's an expression of interest form on there so you can fill that in and then you'll go on our mailing list and we'll get in touch with you um uh, if i can i'll get the 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 form up on a screen as well so you can you can fill it out here so yeah uh, thank you to everyone thank you to charlie and alex for organizing it uh, and doing all the av today uh thank you to steve for manning the camera and bringing the beers thank you um, and thank you to our brilliant panelists um, for giving such great advice and insight this evening. It's been fantastic. Thank you. Very much.